I'd like to welcome you along here today to have a look at the Bayer's Sea Treatment Application Centre here in Brisbane. It's part of a global network that Bayer has established to educate the marketplace about how to apply seed treatments to different types of seed and also to conduct research and development into how different products affect different seeds from an application point of view so that farmers get the best benefits. This seed treatment application centre, part of the goal of it is to teach people about the characteristics of seed. Each seed has a different set of application parameters that we must work through. An example is here something like this ryegrass seed. This is 500,000 seeds per kilo and has a different set of criteria to run the machinery by compared to lucent seed that acts totally different in each type of machine. Then you go to lupins or if you come to corn. This example here are these two corn samples. They look extremely similar but there's actually 30% difference in number of seeds per kilo in both of those. Therefore, we must make allowances for this when applying seed treatment for the job. Wheat is another one. In this situation here, they look very similar, but these two wheat examples are actually 12% difference. So you need to tell the computer systems that there is a 12% difference. With this seed treatment centre, we have all of these seeds on site so we can actually demonstrate to people how the different characteristics of seed perform differently through different machines and also, also have effects on their seed treatment products. As technology changes, there are different types of seed application systems that are now being used around the world and here in Australia. This system to my right here is a continuous treater. Uh, that is now quite popular and common on mobile trucks applying seed treatments to cereal around Australia. Basically what it does is designed is that it measures grain via a volumetric seed, seed wheel who then comes down through a treating system here where chemical is atomized. We have a computer control system here that controls the whole system in that it determines what volume of seed from a leader's point of view then turns that into kilos and tells the pumps how much chemical is applied. This system is very accurate in that it measures chemical down, it then atomizes the chemical on a meter wheel here, so you get thousands and thousands of little droplets of a chemical that is applied via a curtain to seed that then goes into a mixing chamber here where you get a lot of secondary coverage and then the seed is treated at the end. These systems are, are a high throughput. This system here is a 10 ton an hour unit, but Quite commonly you see 20 and 25 tonne an hour units available now to farmers right across Australia. With continuous treaters, the secondary treating process is extremely important. About 60 to 70 per cent of the final treating process is achieved through this secondary auger system. Here in, the, here in the Bayer facility, we actually look at the different types of rotary systems, the different blade setups that can be achieved to make sure we maximise coverage on a seed to seed basis. There are different types of auger systems and mixing systems to suit different types of seed. Part of this facility set up here is to look at maximising the type of machinery set up so that we get the best result of products on the seed. There are limitations with the continuous treaters in that all products must be applied at the same time. An alternative to that is what they call a rotary batch treater. This system here is designed uh, around treating all different types of seed. What it does is you have a similar weighing system here where it measures out a single batch of seed. In this case here it weighs out two kilos at a time or up to that amount. A specified amount of seed is then deposited in a rotary bin here where you have a plate at the bottom of it spinning in one direction. You then have a mixing disc in the middle where the chemical goes spinning in the reverse direction. The advantage with a rotary batch system is that you're putting on a specified amount of chemical with a specified weight of seed, extremely accurate. The other advantage with a rotary system is that you can apply products in layers. This system here, we have three pumps over here, so you can have three different products going on at different times. So you may, for argument's sake, put on a rhizobia on a pasture seed, you may then put on an insecticide over the top of that, then you may put on some glue to fix lime to that seed over, over that sort of system. That is one of the big advantages with this rotary system. Not a lot of rotary systems are used for cereal seed purely because of the cost. They are extremely accurate, very technologically advanced, 
and therefore tended to be suited to the seeds whereby we need to do a lot more things to them like pasture seeds, vegetable seeds and also things like corn and sorghum where we're putting a particular amount of chemical on to do a particular job. Bayer is a manufacturer of seed treatments as you'd be aware. During the registration process our technical people determine how much chemical has to go on to control the insects and diseases but we also need to be able to make recommendations on how to apply the product to the seed. In this situation here, all we've got is that this is a badly applied sample, this is a well applied sample. And the only difference between these two samples is the amount of water that has been applied. With high water volumes, and that is this is a total of six litres per tonne, this has got very even seed to seed coverage, which is fantastic from a farmer point of view. This here has gone on at three litres per tonne total volume, it's very uneven, it's blotchy, and would result in poor control of diseases or insects in the field. One of the goals of this facility is to be able to demonstrate this to people and show them the differences, so that when they go out and treat seed commercially in the field, they know how to apply the product correctly. Dust on seed is a major issue. We have two types of dust. You have organic dust that's naturally occurring in amongst grain, then you have dust that is created by putting products on seed and then through a physical abrasion process by normal uh, moving of grain, you have dust that's created. It's important with developing seed treatment products to use these products to minimise dust and also keep the product on the seed so that the farmer gets the best benefits from it. Internationally now, a Hubeck machine has now become a standard to measure grain dust and dust whether that be from organic point of view or from a seed treatment point of view. This machine here basically is a small vacuum system with the grain that is put in there, we put 100 grams of grain in there, that rotates around for a specified time, the little vacuum system then has the sucks through here and we catch all of the dust on a small filter paper that is in the end of this black canister on the end here. That is then weighed and we can then determine an amount of dust that is comes off the grain per 100 grams of seed. Different formulations can influence this directly. When the filter paper is used there and it catches the grain dust, what happens is you end up with a filter paper looking like this. This is an example of untreated grain. So there is a natural level of dust that happens with wheat seed and this was an example of that. After the seed treatment product is applied, we tend to find the dust is actually reduced. Here it's all centralised in the middle and it's actually less dust. Now an example of a different formulation, same, same wheat seed, but we change the seed treatment products and you can see here now how there's a lot more dust and this product is actually unacceptable because the dust level increased compared to the original sample. So it's very important to measure what happens with seed treatments. These days, agriculture is changing. Growers now are using far more precision oriented planting systems rather than the old conventional combine systems. What that means is that they want to know that if a seed treatment is put on a seed, does it affect the way the seed flows through their planters? This is a simple device to, to, to measure throughput of seed through a funnel at a particular time. And the idea is to say, okay, you test the seed with no seed treatment and it flows at a particular rate. You then put the seed treatment on and test it again. And the idea is to say, well, okay, that seed treatment has changed the characteristics of the seed by this, which means the farmer will have to recalibrate his machine or he won't have to recalibrate his machine. It's a simple process. All we're doing is we're measuring seed throughput across time. The seed passes the sensor and just measures the time. With products like canola this is important because there's a lot of products going on canola these days and it does change the characteristics of the way some canola seed flows through some planting machines. With this machine, it's, as soon as the seed passes the sensor, the timer starts. As soon as the seed finishes, the timer stops. So we get an accurate measure of the way the seed is going to flow through a planting system. Yes, it is not the same as every planter, but at least it gives us a, a measurement of the way seed is going to flow. Now you've seen, treating seed can be a complex process. 
It is a mixture of not only the seed treatment product, how it's applied and what sort of water volume is used, but also the type of machinery that is used as well. You've also seen that seed type is also a crucial one. Seeds vary from pasture seed to wheat seed to sweet corn seed or maize seed. And this seed treatment centre allows people to take all of those into consideration when working out how to apply seed properly.